Hello, boys and girls. We're back again. I'm Mrs. Taylor from Baker Elementary. And I'm Mrs. Conrad from Juniata Elementary. We are here today to talk about finding evidence to support our theories. Researchers, I hope you're all proud of the work you've done. In a few days, we will finish this unit with a celebration. So now is a time to feel proud. We could, you know, put our feet up on the table and take it easy for the next few days, confident that we've already done some terrific work. In a way, we have reached a mountaintop in our research. The thinking you're doing is terrific. But this is the thing about mountaintops. Once you reach, once you reach the top of a mountain, you can see the next mountain. We only have a few days to go in this unit. But I think if we work super hard in these next few days, you can reach one or more mountaintops in your research. Are you game? Today, we want to teach you that once researchers have read books, collected information, studied patterns, and grown theories, they are ready to do more. They ask, what does this evidence suggest? How can I study all the evidence to grow new theories that are evidence-based? So our theory is animal babies whose parents stay with them longer might end up being smarter. And the animal babies that grow up without any education or caretaking from parents might be less smart. So let me see. I'm thinking I already know of some animals that are especially smart. After researching and reading a book called Gorillas by Laurie McManus, I learned that gorillas are some of the smartest animals in the world. In the text it says, young gorillas learn skills by copying older gorillas and then practicing. We can use this expert writing in our research for evidence. But we can't stop here. We need to look at other books to find more evidence. I think I remember hearing something about wolf pups learning from their parents. In this book, Gray Wolves by Don McLeaf, I read that mother and father wolves usually stay together for life and raise their pups or offspring. The pups stay with the pack for a few years before leaving to start a pack of their own. And then in the caption, it also says pups watch and learn from their parents. We can add this evidence to prove our theory. I'm also thinking of an example of a theory that a student who was in my class came up with. She told our class that if an animal is in a group, it's more protected and it's much easier to fight predators. Her evidence was, zebras' predators are lions. Maybe if it's in one whole pack, it can fight the lion. She even found more evidence that a wolf can fight in a pack. Readers, as you go off today, you want to get right to work testing out your theories by gathering evidence from many sources. Find a clean page in your notebook or a blank sheet of paper and write your theory at the top of the page. When you are reading, jot down any evidence you find to support this theory. This will become your theory chart. One more thing, as you research today, remember that good researchers let their questions change and grow as they test their theories. So don't be surprised if you end up with a different theory at the end of reading time today. Your activity for today is, number one, continue your work you started yesterday. Number two, gather evidence to support your theory and record it on the page you started in your notebook. Number three, look for several pieces of evidence from different animals that support your theory. Number four, if you are starting a new book, be sure to preview the table of contents and read sections that will provide evidence to support your theory. Okay, readers, off you go. Bye.